Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Angel build is going really, really well, so let's keep at it. Just a quick update on the turbo situation. This thing here was a bit cooked. The bushings and everything in here are fine, but the compressor wheel, which was here, was all chewed to pieces. Fins were bent, like something got in there and wasn't really happy, like a rock or a small animal or something. So I got that taken apart and sent out to fix all because I have a compressor wheel that's in great shape, but the shaft is uh, somewhere around two millimeters smaller. So I need to get the shaft bore opened up so that I can use this compressor wheel on this turbo. He's gonna put it on a lathe for me and spin it down and hopefully it works. If not, like I said it's not a big deal because it already doesn't work. So it's not gonna like, it's not gonna work less. So I'll have an update on that soon, hopefully. And as, as in any case ever before, if anybody has an old dump truck turbo around Central they don't need or wanna to donate to the channel or something, that'd be like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have anything solidified yet that I really want a turbo or rat rod. Or if you've got a good turbo for a decent price, like let me know. Anyway, back to the engine build. I want to get this front end put back together again. I just got to cover it up here because this is a used shop every day. And man, it will not move, will it? Go away, jacket. And I'm going to get the oil pump ready. I'm going to port it, stack some shims in under the spring, get some more pressure. And... That'll be pretty much it for that. I'll bolt that on. Probably maybe even put the front cover on, crank pulley. The rear cover is ready to go on, so this is gonna be a little bit of assembly today. So let's get at it. Now I've never done this before, so you're gonna have to bear with me because I'm learning as I go too. Man, those bolts are tight. Did not expect that. Okay. Oh, well, that comes apart. Just make sure all the bolts are the same length, which looks like they are. So I'll put those aside. Looks like this just pops off. You can see that the pump is in good shape. Doesn't look like there's any metal or anything there, no scratches. This is in good shape. A little bit of dirt came off my hands there. And the outer ring looks good. I don't see any damage at all. So I'm gonna lay this down on the table, but exactly as it came out, like I don't wanna put it in upside down, just in case. I guess it's wears the way it was in there. So I'm gonna keep that right over here. And everything down here looks really good. No damage, no, not even any oil built up or anything there. Now the next thing is gonna to be to take out this pressure relief valve. I'm actually gonna lay all this on a towel. I never thought of it before that, how rough this bench is. Okay, this should be nicer. Pull all of our bolts aside, front cover. That's much better. So here we have an eight millimeter Allen. Huh. It wasn't as tight as the front cover bolts were. Okay, so plug comes out, then it's a spring. There's a little valve in here too, right down there. I don't know if that one has to come out or if it can come out all the way. Oh, here we go. I just want to see what it looks like. Yeah, so it's just a standard valve. I'll clean it up, put it back in, make sure there's no dirt or old oil left in there. So it goes in with the plunger facing up into the pump. 
So starting with porting, you can see that there's a really thick ledge right here. Not out where the oil pump o-ring sits here, but in farther, this big thick ledge that's right here. So I'm going to smooth this out with the surface here. And that's going to let oil come into the pump a lot smoother instead of hitting this at ledge. And then after, we'll port the outlet here to make it take advantage of all this space around here where it comes into the block. And for that, I'm going to use a, one of these little small stone things on a regular drill because I don't have a Dremel, but that should work fine. Might just take a little bit longer. everything's all cleaned up we can see here that that looks much smoother that looks way better now oil is not going to hit the wall in here it's just going to be a nice smooth transition from the pickup tube into the pump and then i could have done this a little bit cleaner but i didn't have the right tool for it so just kind of smoothed out the edge and it's not as sharp now so it's going to go from the pump body into the block a lot smoother Now some people like to dimple this gear here to create less resistance and stuff, but I'm not going to mess with that just because I haven't done that side of it before. Maybe the next time I will. But as for now, we're ready to stack a shim in under this spring so it can hold more pressure. Now to shim the spring, I found a bunch of these little tiny washer things. Now they're very thin, but they're cupped. Now the cool part about that is the spring actually fits perfectly in the cup. So it's not like the spring can move around or anything when it gets in there. And these, the thickness is not very much. Looking at about 15 thousandths. So they say to use about 70 thousandths. So we go 30 45, 60. Now there's probably going to be a little bit of space between these, but they will compress. And I'll just go 75 because there was one video where a guy said he did 100, so not serious. And I'll just uh, sort of compress these together in the vise a little bit. I just compressed two in the vise and it looks like they go pretty flat. So I think I'll do 15, 30. 45, 60, 75. I think I'll just do the 60. It's not going to hurt to go in under a little bit, but I don't want to go over too much. So I'm just going to pop them in here like one at a time. Let's see if we can get this in there straight without beating it up. That's one. It's in place and now looks like the spring sits in there really well and because this is what I use as assembly lube I'm gonna put a little bit in this cap here and that's what I'll lubricate those gears with and now 
I'm ready to install all of this junk again. So here's the plunger, the pressure relief plunger. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on here so it doesn't go in there dry and end up causing a scratch or binding and making all the oil pressure. Man, this stuff is sticky. I'll just make sure it goes all the way in with the spring no issues at all and now for the fun part try to install this with all the shims in there forgot one thing actually I'm going to put a little bit of ultra black on here just a little bit just to seal up those threads and stop it from backing off a lot of people use red locker or the like just enough not to make it ooze out but to stop the threads from leaking or backing off so I'm just gonna hold this firmly here and get that thread started without stripping it out there we go Okay, here we can see that there wasn't too much sealing on there because it's not oozing all out around everywhere. So I don't think there's any down in here. Now the torque on this bolt here is 106 inch pounds, which is not even 10 foot pounds. So I don't have a range that goes down that low. So I'm just gonna give it a little push just to make sure it's good. Now it's time to return these gears to the pump body. And I'm not gonna use ultra black that I just picked up for that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take some of our sticky juice here. Just kind of rub that around there a little bit. I'm sure this should help a little bit with picking up oil on the first start, although I am going to prime the pump also. Put some of that down here. So I'll make sure everything here is lubricated so there's no dry spots when it starts up. Man, I wouldn't even want to hold on. Stay there. <laughs> that is wicked. So now, yep. Gerald's saying he needs a can of C16. C16 is 116 octane, right? Yeah, well, 117. Is that? But yeah, I've seen. So, so that'll be. That's harder to get. C16, you can buy. There's a company in Nova Scotia that sells it. I, it might actually be VP. The guys who do the racetrack oh, yeah. at Avondale get drums of it brought in. Yeah. Yeah. And that dimple was on the top. So, so he was trying to find somewhere yeah. on the island to buy it. Yeah, the right. rice, nobody, bought, nobody sells it on the island. No, that's what it's, you know. Um, if he you said can, that he can get it at Quebec from a company that makes cloaks, or clo cloths or cloaks, or oil. K-L-O-T-Z, right? Yeah. Clots, yeah. Yeah. Or what I think that's what it's called anyway. Yeah. Um, if he can get a hold of the guys at um, Eastbound, Eastbound mm -hmm. Speedway, yeah. yeah. That's, they get drums of it brought in for people. Oh. So he'd be able to get it through them. I don't know what the cost is, but I imagine for a drum of it, it's not real cheap. <laughs> yeah. Probably 4 or $5 a liter. Yeah. That's, he only needs like a five gallon. Just no, they might sell that yeah. too. Yeah, that's a, no, that's a, that's a drive. I told them the issue is the, the you know like people don't like shipping gas like that's that's yeah. why it's tough to get right because yeah. it's, it's you're shipping a explosive you know shipping a bomb yeah <laughs> you know it's, the additives aren't as bad because they're oh this will work it's going to come in on its own skid anyway whatever it is we take yeah. so and I told them I said well it doesn't really like 
not really enough demand for it for Craig to bring it in or become a dealer. Or, oh, you know, like no, it's you only, only get like one, two people a year. I buy it, it but <laughs> yeah, no, I know it. Between me and Frampton. Yeah. Well, the other thing is like if we could look into maybe BP would sponsor you for something. You know, like that would be something. <laughs> some free race gas. Yeah. Ooh, got an oil pump. Work. Oh. Never poured out an oil pump before. I think it'll be kind of cool to try it. Geez, I was looking into two stroke porting. Man. You can do a lot with that, eh? So much science behind it, though. Like, it's. it's <laughs> no worries. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of flow signs in there. So much beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, I thought about doing it one time. Yeah. But then I was like, no, no I'll mess it up. I was going to port the heads on my old site engine. <laughs> yeah. There's just uh, so much stuff on the port. Porting a two stroke just changes the timing of it. Like, Right? When well, it, uh, yeah, I guess it would. That'd yeah, fuel it's not, quicker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not the same as a four stroke engine. How do you adjust timing on two stroke? Do you open a ring gap more or do you? Like the. You need to vary. All right. Advances timing. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to tighten this in a cross pattern. I'm not going to let it bap bap too much. Now the cover bolts here are 106 inch pounds also. So I'm just going to tighten those down until they don't want to really turn anymore. Just to be sure that I don't want to over tighten them. I can only imagine twisting off a bolt in one of these oil pumps. Then I gotta go out in the pile and find another oil pump. Man, now this should flow more volume and more pressure. All for free. Good stuff. Now to set the oil pump correctly, and make sure that it's centered so it's not off. I went on Melling's site or on their YouTube channel and found their directions. I'm assuming this fits at all. There we go. And I found their directions on how to properly set the oil pump because there is a little bit of movement in this and if it's set incorrectly, it can cause wear. And I guess after time, send oil out to your engine, which is never fun. Relax. And according to them, you set the bolts to just flush. But not tight so that the oil pump itself can still move around. And then rotate the engine a full revolution. good to me. I'm just going to back them off a little tiny bit and just try it again. Now this came directly from Melling, so anybody who buys the shims and gets all upset, take it up with them, I guess. And then they said torque it down. And the torque spec is 18 foot-pounds like every other LS bolt. And if 
already set on 18. There we go. Oil pump installed. Now, the next step is to put in the front seal. Part number is here, 100470 National. So I'll just go and put this one in. Seal installer would be ideal, but hammer works fine. Just gotta make sure that it's seated in all the way. So we'll see if we can get this one to sit in place. I am gonna paint it before I put it in, but uh, super tight. Just gonna give it a quick go over with this, not remove any material, just clean the paint out of it. Oh yeah, that's much better. And the O-ring here will seal it and stop oil from getting out. But I do have to paint this one first, so I'll install that later. Now let's put it on the engine. Now I did forget one important step, and that is to paint all the heads of my bolts. Doesn't take much to make the bolts look really good. I figured I'd go ahead and paint these first because there's not much to it. So I used regular roll bar and chassis paint. It's enamel and well, it won't wear off as easily. So I'm gonna give it another coat or two just to really make them black. Might as well paint the sensor actually while I'm here too. So I'll stuff a little bit of tape in there and wrap this up and uh, that'll go black too. Well, the cover is ready, front seal is in, cam sensor is painted, bolts are all painted. Now I can get ready to bolt the front cover on, and I'll also do the back cover after. So to do the front cover, it has to be aligned perfectly with the block, so the oil pan mounts flat to it, and also left to right so that the crank sensor seals up correctly. I do it a little bit different, I don't use an alignment tool or anything like that. Usually I'll put all the bolts in like hand tight so that the cover is solid and then press my pulley on and then rotate it to find where it matches the block. Uh, here's the cover and I forgot to get a gasket. And this is a used gasket but it's one that it's a reusable fill pro pipe. Just tear off some of this old sealer I put on it. Don't really need sealer until the bottom of the gasket or the bottom of the pan gets there. And I tore the corner off, so I'm going to use another resealable Felpro one. Alrighty, the other way. So this being upside down. Okay. Gonna put in a couple bolts so I can get it all lined up correctly. The cover is pretty much out of there anyway, tight because. The holes aren't elongated a lot. So it's not like you can move it around a bunch, but it does have to be pretty much perfect. And I just realized that I did it completely backwards because my gasket's backwards. I didn't think all the bolt holes would line up like they do. So glad I caught that before putting the balancer on. I'm 
not a big upset. Just a redo. I got a lot of wiring to do with this yet too. I've got to completely rewire another harness, make another fuse block. I'm missing one bolt. Where did I put it? There it is. Now that I got the gasket on correctly, we'll move on. Now the balance are going on. And I just sprayed some paint on it. Was, oh yeah, it's still wet. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to put in this old bolt. On a block of wood. Now, I've probably always done this wrong, but I usually like to bang it on a few times like that. And then screw it in a bunch. with the wrench. So it says 240 foot-pounds to install this thing, which is wild. And this thing goes to 150, so I'll do what I can. Why are you working? Oh, more paint. Well, that'll have to do. I forgot to paint the balancer, so I did it in a rush. And where I took off the paint with my hands, I'll just give it a quick spray after. I didn't spray where the belt rides because that'll just make noise. Okay, so I'll pull on this side and get right in the right way. So I'm going to set this to 150, make a click, and then push it farther than that. <laughs> Not what you call calibrated. Well, apparently the torque wrench just doesn't want to work, so I'm not pushing it farther than that. Making a handy dandy block of wood. No, oh, that's on there. That was probably 300 foot pounds. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like it rolled the threads, so that's a good thing. Because I was making it want to click. Oh, bolt's fine, so that's a good sign anyway. And this is the bolt that Charles Williams bought me. It's a, it's a new balancer bolt. GM part number is 12557840.
This will be the first time that I've ever bought or had a new balancer bolt. So that's different for me. I don't really trust this torque wrench anymore. <laughs> okay, got a new torque wrench. This is the best part about CarQuest having a lifetime warranty. So, 37. Oh my. Not working. I will clean all this stuff out, of course. Blow it out. 37. Well, that didn't take much. 140 degrees, man, that's a lot. Oh. This will be 90. This will be 180. So we'll go sort of halfway between that. <laughs> That is on there. Yeah, okay, that's it. My ribs hurt. Installed. That new bolt is pretty. Okay. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So now I'll slack all the bolts on the cover and then just kind of line it up with the base of the the block for where the oil pan sits. That's the way I've done this all the time. I've never had a front seal leak, but you know, I'd never say no to a set of uh, seal installers either if I could find them. But sometimes they can be hard to get around here because everything takes like a month to ship. But that's it. So now I'll just go ahead and do this. I'll put a rag or something over the back of the block and give this a quick spray. I don't need you any more block of wood. <coughs> Slack all these up, make sure they're not holding on to the cover anywhere. I'm just going to use a square to get the cover flush with the block. And should be able to get it decently close anyway. A little bit of RTV will make up the rest, and those gaskets are really thick. It's looking good anyway. And like every other bolt on this engine, it's 18 foot pounds. Seven. And eight. I'll just check them all. Make sure none are loose. Always good to count. It's always good to check them all again. I don't really like leaks. Mint. That looks really good with all the black bolts and everything. 
the green and black goes together really, really well. While I'm here, I might as well put the rear cover seal in. Part number is 100085, a national again. Yeah, that's cool because it comes with this installer thingy. I guess that goes on over the crank first and uh, doesn't tear up the seal. So I'm gonna just smack it in with a hammer like I did before. Now I know this is not ideal, but it's what I have. So I'm just gonna smack this in with a hammer and a big hammer. Let's go with a smaller one. trick to getting these install and not just flop all around is little taps all the way around and make sure that it's seated which it is Sweet. We're getting down to the minor details now on this front cover. Next thing is the cam sensor. Surface a little bit. I didn't remove any metal. I just uh, cleaned it up so it wouldn't be so tight getting in there because corrosion builds up. And everything gets really annoying. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Will you work? Yeah. Yes. I suppose I should hook this bit of tape out so when it plugs in, it actually connects. Man, I love it. Well, we're getting down to the bitter end now of probably the halfway point, but whatever. What's next? Pistons. Pistons. I want to talk about pistons. So I was going to do flat top pistons, and I say was with a with a heavy heart, but nine and a half to one, nine, six, nine, seven, whatever it is, twin turbos. It'll survive because the compression isn't absolutely through the roof. It will take piles of boost, and well, I'm going to gap the rings anyway. So what I was thinking was, I don't, I can't really afford to go and spend like $500 on twin turbos and another 260 bucks on pistons, another 300 on wastegates, gaskets. It's gonna come up to really, really quickly be like 1500 bucks. So I think I'll skip the pistons. I'm gonna go and put those in and like maybe buy one turbo at the end of this month when I get paid from YouTube because of all you guys. You guys have bought me a turbo. That's so cool. So one at the end of this month. And then when I get paid from YouTube again next month, maybe I can buy the second turbo then and then work on it over the spring, or I should say over the, the rest of the winter, um, buy like a wastegate here and a wastegate there and a little bit of oil lines, whatever. And um, I think that's the plan for now. So right now what I'm gonna do is rings because I haven't filed the rings yet. And I, done a, I did a video on filing the rings before, like an in-depth how-to video. So I'm gonna bomb it on time-lapse. Probably, probably do the first ring as like a, a full-time because that's how I've been going with this build. And then not bore you guys doing the other eight cylinders 
we'll do one in full time and the rest of them on Bangalore time lapse and listen to some nice relaxing music or some techno or whatever I'm in the mood to put on, I guess. So hopefully you enjoy it. Alrighty, so here are the rings. I've got more than I need, of course, because I scrapped uh, la, 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 16, no, 14 pistons. So I've got a lot of rings to pick from. And I, I'm, I think I might have already picked through some of them and took out the junk ones. And uh, I'll pick eight of the best. And as for the oil rings and all that down here, it doesn't matter anyway. I'll just pick what's not rusty. So I just checked online. And for a boosted LS, they say to go somewhere around 25 and 28. But just because I like to overdo things, I'm going to go 28 and 30. So 28 thousandths on the top ring, 30 thousandths on the bottom ring. And I'm not going to touch the oil scrapers because uh, I've never done it before. <laughs> not that I haven't had pistons crack, but they always take out the top ring lands. So I don't really care. I'd rather not burn more oil. Now, as for going bigger than the recommended spec, I don't mind losing one PSI of uh, compression just to, you know, be a little bit sure that I'm not going to crack that top ring land. I've had it happen. It sucks. I don't want to rip the engine apart because it took out a little corner of piston. That's stupid. I'd rather put a hole in the block. I'd be happier with that. So let's. Uh, I'm going to check these out really quick, and we'll get to gapping. I'm going to check the ring gap on these two first. This is the top ring, second ring. So I'll just put it up dot up just to make it easier. And I like to push it down, I don't know, about halfway down the distance of the piston. And so the top ring needs to be 28. I'll just see if that's anywhere close. Huh? Fits right in sick so i don't need to touch that one and now the second ring no the second wants to be 30. i'll just check to see if it's anywhere near 28. Ooh, this might work sick i don't have to touch it at all that's definitely a benefit of having an engine with like 300,000 kilometers on it. Automatic ring gap. Now, just because this cylinder number seven was fine, I'm not just going to go and skip it and assume that every ring gap is perfect because it's very possible they're not. So I'm still going to go ahead and check every ring gap. I'll assemble the pistons as I go, and that will make sure that I don't mix up cylinders with rings. Not that it really matters. Like these rings are out of a different engine. I really could care less where they go back in. But if I check it and it's 28 thousandths on the cylinder seven, I'm gonna put it back in cylinder seven. So I'm gonna go and put it on time-lapse and bomb away till this is done. Well, 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 we have pistons with rings on them. I still got to clean them up a little bit and bury them in brake cleaner because, you know, some stuff gets on them after being in a box for like two weeks or whatever. While well, I've been waiting to put this together, but they're ready to go in. Now I'm going to do that in next video because this one's starting to get up there in time again. And it's nice to pace ourselves. Hello, Greg. But I'm making some serious progress. So I'm going to finish it up here. Next video, I will be putting these pistons in, of course. So I just have to spray them off with a bit of brake cleaner, clock the rings, and jam them in there. After that's done, then I can work on the windage tray, the oil pump pickup tube, oil pan can go on. It's gonna look like an engine very, very quickly. So thanks again for checking out the video. Thanks to all the new subscribers, getting up a lot now. It's super exciting. And thanks for YouTube members and patrons. If you want to check out my Patreon and help out the channel a little bit, just a small donation sort of thing, 
It's uh, patreon.com slash station rod rats. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.